What's up everyone, this is Jeremy, and this is a string showdown where basically I'm gonna be comparing two sets of acoustic guitar strings back to back to back. Today we have Elixir NanoWeb 8020s, which are awesome strings. They're coated versus clear tone phosphor bronze, which are uncoated but treated. So there's a bit of a difference there. I think treat it really just means that there's a bit of corrosion resistance, whereas coat it means that there's like a like a slick film across the string so that when you're playing, it doesn't really create like squeaks and squeals as your fingers are traveling up and down the fretboard. Um, to my surprise, both strings sounded great. Actually, I love Elixir anyway, but these clear tones are really awesome strings. So I really just want to try them out. Someone has suggested these strings in the comments and I've never heard them before, but I was kind of anxious to get them on because I want to try as many strings as possible. And I really did like these. I'm sort of a fan of coated strings, but for an uncoated string, uh, these sound great, they play great. Um, they're different than 8020. So phosphor bronze is always gonna be a different beast than 8020. So 8020s are gonna be a brighter string just by the composition of metals that they're made of. And phosphor bronze are always gonna be a little bit more mellow and warmer. So depending on what kind of acoustic guitar you have, you might wanna lean toward one versus the other. I sort of think if you have a dark guitar, and I almost mean that literally as well. So if you have like a guitar with a mahogany um, top or a cedar top, I kind of like 8020s to brighten it up a little bit. Whereas if you have maybe a spruce top, uh, maybe try out the phosphor bronze first. But again, like with these, try everything. You know, don't, don't hinder yourself and don't get like stuck into like one brand. Try as many as you can. So as a guitarist, our journey like really never ends for guitar playing. So just keep going, keep trying new stuff. But we're gonna go through more examples to see which ones actually sound, maybe dare I say better, or which ones you sort of like, you know, what hits your ear better. Um, I probably should say that all of these examples are recorded the exact same way. This is a cool showdown because when you're comparing phosphor bronze versus 8020s, there's a really stark sound difference. So I just wanted to put that out there. I did record these examples the exact same way every single time, but the difference is stark, which is why I'm excited about this. Um, another word of warning is that um, going into this, you probably should know that 8020s sort of have a lot of brightness, a lot of treble or high end, which means that uh, the sound wave creates a lot of transients, a lot of spikes. So when I record everything, I do normalize all the audio clips, which means that I basically just bring all of those peaks to the same level, zero dB. So relative to each other, they all are around the same volume. But when you're dealing with bright strings, it creates these really tall peaks in the waveform, which might make it sound like the volume is lower when being recorded. That's not necessarily the case in how the human ear hears it, but that might be the case in these examples. So from one example to the next, I try to make the volumes as close as possible, but just realize that 8020s might sound a little maybe softer in volume compared to the phosphor bronze because the phosphor bronze don't have those peaks or transients that could clip the audio signal. So I'm probably getting way too into it. Um, check out these examples. I'm gonna be back after the video. Let me know what you think.
wasn't lying, right? They really are starkly different. 80-20 strings versus phosphor bronze strings. They both sounded good, and in person, I kind of like them both. I know in the recordings that the 80-20s might sound a little too bright and brittle, but I think in person, that sounds great. And if you're playing with a band, that might be desirable because you might need those high frequencies to cut through drums and bass and vocals. So there's definitely a place for those type of strings. Normally, I don't put 8020s on something with a spruce top. I have a Taylor GS Mini Mahogany, which I would probably reserve those 8020s for. Normally, with my Taylor 812 CE, I go with Phosphor Bronze, just to sort of maybe mellow that guitar out a little bit. It's a bit of a bright guitar anyway. Anyway, let me know what you all have to say in the comments. I'm kind of curious what your take is on this. Also, if you want to see any more videos of me comparing strings, I have a ton of string showdowns, basically in any string that you can imagine. And if I don't have it, leave a comment. I'll probably buy the strings right away on Amazon and make a string showdown. That's usually how it works. I do want to say, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. That really helps this channel grow. I really want this to be a community of like-minded people who just just love guitar, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, gear, all that stuff, and I really want to build and grow this channel. And if you subscribe, that sort of helps me out as well. That's pretty much all I have to say about that, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye!